love now and Did you fall in love last night? I love love. love was stronger than anything. You feel the love of love. And I love you more than anything. There's still love. Love. From the New York Times, I'm Anna Martin. Welcome to Modern Love. And happy holiday week, everyone. Since it's a holiday, today we've got an essay by Kima Christian Taylor about people she calls holiday men. Kima's essay is read by Shana Small. I am the daughter of a holiday man. That's what my grandmother called the three generations of absentee fathers in our family. Like clockwork, they would show up around Christmas and then disappear again to whereabouts unknown. Growing up, I struggled with the absence of my own father. My grandfather, a former holiday man, was trying to pay his penance to my grandmother, his first wife. He was a gardener, and he planted his remorse in the soil, where it blossomed into a lemon tree and then a fig tree, and then a plum, orange, peach, and apple, all lined up in a colored row behind our garage. They always come back, my mother said, as my grandfather gardened. They always realize their wrongs. But I was far more concerned about the origin of a disturbing and seemingly unavoidable pattern. She and my grandmother choosing the wrong men. What if we're cursed, I said. What if I'm next? We're not cursed, she said. As it turned out, I wasn't plagued by a mysterious blight. It was more of a Pavlovian conditioning from my childhood. Daddy loves you, my father would say as he mocked the white way I spoke. Daddy loves you, he would say as he refused to support my education, but would hand me $100 for a pedicure. Daddy loves you, he would say, escaping an embrace that would leave me smelling of his cologne for hours, even though he had stayed for only five minutes. That was the thing about holiday men. They were cruel, but they were dazzling. When they deigned to pay attention to you, even for five minutes, it felt like love. My father is almost a decade younger than my mother and was, to me, undeniably cool. I would gush at the way he stretched out his haze and marvel at his strength and big smile. When he took me out for drives, it didn't matter that he was blaring music that my mother never let me listen to. It was so loud it was impossible for us to talk during the limited moments we had together. It was a true act of love when he turned down the volume whenever I'd pipe up. Each December, he would call to say he was coming over, I would brush my hair and put on clothes that were nice, but didn't look like I was trying too hard. I would run back and forth to the window, excited for the moment when his white pickup truck would pull into our driveway. He would sit next to me, cologne filling the room, his snakeskin boots wild against our Persian rug. He would get everything wrong, from how old I was to what school I went to, how many suitors I had, At the time, none. Within minutes, he would slap his knees and tell me he had a party to go to. I would wait for his white truck to disappear before bursting into tears. Daddy loves you, he said one last time when I was 17, surprising me by apologizing for not being around to raise me, promising he would do better, be better. I thought... Maybe this is what my mother meant. Maybe he's realized his wrongs. But I never saw him again. One day I marched into the kitchen and said to my mother, I don't want to make the same mistake. I don't want to marry the wrong man. I was determined to avoid her fate, to find a husband who was nothing like my father. So I quizzed her and documented her every misstep in love. But the Pavlovian cycle had its hooks in me, and I was immediately drawn to fledgling holiday men, men who disappeared when you mentioned the slightest discontent, men who promised to text 
but never did. Men who professed their affection before revealing a girlfriend I hadn't known about. This, I figured, was normal. In my mind, true love was a toxic, complicated, all-consuming mess. When Lana Del Rey's Blue Jeans came on, I would sing along, Love is mean. Love hurts. But the list I made with my mother of her failed relationships did not account for what the holiday men had left in their wake. A resilient, quick-witted tribe of matriarchs who didn't miss a beat when their husbands fell short of their vows. Instead, they cut them off and shielded their offspring from more hollow attempts at love. I had been so busy pitying the matriarch's plight that I ignored their power. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Kima Christian Taylor fully understands what the women in her family have done for her. That's next. My grandmother, the first in her family to finish college, raised two Harvard graduates on her teacher's salary. Years later, she stepped in to help raise me when my mother's marriage fell apart. When my grandmother checked my homework, she would point to her head and say, what you have up here, no one can take away from you. She dragged me to church and volunteer events to show me how giving back was the best thing we could do with our blessings. One day, she saw a woman sobbing in Starbucks and offered her the pack of tissues that she always carried in her purse. I was mortified, but she was teaching me by example that we needed to look out for other people. My mother, the breadwinner and provider, also gave me everything my father couldn't. Strong values, tough love, weekend drives to theater and choir and dance practices on the other side of town. She worked late nights to put me in the best schools that led me to a Harvard education. She had been saving for it since before I was born. Because of the holiday men, I was surrounded by fundamentally good, loving, and formidable women who pushed me to think for myself when I asked for somebody else's opinion, to save my tears when I cried over something trivial, to strive to learn as much as I could because knowledge would be my power. Years later, I met my now fiancé. Even though I had been raised on my mother and grandmother's love, I was confused by the ease and kindness of his courtship. Sometimes I thought that a lack of pain, drama, and games was a sign that something was wrong. I poked and prodded, picking fights designed to reveal any holiday man tendencies before I became too invested. I was puzzled when he didn't run as I began to expose my flaws, and I was confused when I carefully laid out every test meant to drive him away. He remained unfazed and rooted by my side. I was acutely aware that he would listen quietly to my every word, not blasting music or checking his phone, just waiting for me to articulate my thoughts, no matter how inconsequential. I was surprised even more by the way his eyes would spark when I challenged his stances or talked about gunning for a promotion. But it clicked for me one night after I had stayed out late with my girlfriends and came home to find him sleepily propped up on the couch, waiting up until I got home safely, exactly as my mother and grandmother had done during my high school years. No holiday man had ever done that for me. The head of our matriarchal crew died almost a year before my wedding. It was a loss that left me in awe of her sacrifice and her willingness to infuse me with her goodness and strength. My mother reminded me, the ears are the last thing to go. So as my grandmother was leaving us, as she slipped into another world, I held her hand, leaned in, and thanked her for being the gift that the holiday men left behind. Thanks to Kima Christian Taylor. We hope you spent the holiday loving the family you have, whatever that looks like. We'll be back next week 
with more stories. Modern Love is produced by Julia Botero, Christina Josa, and Hans Buto. It's edited by Sarah Saracen. Our executive producer is Jen Poyant. This episode was mixed by Sophia Landman. Our show is recorded by Maddie Masiello. The Modern Love theme music is by Dan Powell. Original music by Pat McCusker, Diane Wong, and Dan Powell. Digital production by Nell Galogli. Special thanks to Anna Diamond at Autumn. The Modern Love column is edited by Daniel Jones. Mia Lee is the editor of Modern Love Projects. I'm Anna Martin. Thanks for listening.